Hello, A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood, published in 1964. Before I begin to tell you about this excellent short novel, the best way to go about this video would be to hear a few words from the author himself about what this novel is about. Do us a great favor, Mr. Isherwood, please. We were both uh, homosexual, both exactly the same age. I fixed on my age. Uh, the only thing was that um, for uh, dramatic purposes, I made him, uh, as you might say, into a widower. His, his friend was dead. And uh, I was really much more interested. It, uh, a lot of people called it a homosexual novel, but in actual fact, it was much more a novel about middle age. Um, because what I wanted to show was the extraordinary variety of behavior in, in middle age. Part of the time, uh, one's quite uh, tending towards senility. And other times, one's rash uh, in a way that seems almost boyish, you know, and uh, apt to indulge in all sorts of uh, embarrassing behavior with the drop of a hat. Um, but on the whole, yes, sure, of course, it's me. I, mean, uh, I never know about anybody except me. I just hope for the best that somebody else will come along and say, well, that's just like me, too. This novel is about middle age. A 50-year-old man, he has come from England, teaches English literature at the university. He is gay and his longtime partner has died. It is a somber, somewhat melancholy novel, but, but it is a very, very good book, A Day in the Life. It is the life of a man from when he wakes up in the morning till he goes to bed to sleep at night. Now it starts off a bit, I was not overwhelmed in any way by the beginning. He wakes up and it is a very slow attempting to get his body ready for the day. Cracking knees, the sore shoulders, looking in the mirror, thinking, oh, I exercise, but I just can't seem to get that little flab off my belly. The book started to get quite good for me when, as he is going, heading in to, to give his university lecture, he, he's sort of building himself up, getting himself ready, getting ready to, to put on that university show, to be that professor for the students. As he's making his way to give his lecture, he's, he's looking at the students and he's remembering their names and he's thinking about the information he knows about them. Oh, there's this one. You know, this one is uh, something of an anarchist. Oh, and this one is an abstract expressionist painter. And he, he's thinking, oh, I wonder if they know about me. Looking at the students and gauging their reaction to him, if he smiles at them, do they reply? Do they smile warmly? Or do they smile a bit woodenly? He's asking, oh, I wonder if, if they know about me. And this is the novel of a single man about how he goes through his day taking on different characteristics for every new situation he's in. This is a very short novel, 152 pages. It's short. So I don't want to give you too much. He gives his lecture to the students. There's a really good bit there where he is, one of the students asks him a questions about something, causes him to deliver like a real speech about being a minority, what it means if you are in the minority and how people feel about minorities, what this says about society. And it's really very good. Like just as he's really getting some momentum with his speech, he notices that all of his students have gone a bit glassy eyed and they're all sort of staring over his shoulder. He realizes that uh, that means that class is over and he's gone over time. And now they're all just watching the clock, hoping that he's going to get the idea that class is over, time for us to go now. I mean, thanks a lot for the speech, but it's finished and we have to go to the next class. And that frustration as a teacher is, um, that was good. That was not exactly my favorite scene. There's there's a lot of wonderful scenes. There was there was one bit, I won't, I'm not, I can't tell you anything about it, but a scene in this novel that really, the emotions really came up and I, I wasn't prepared for that at all. Good, 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 okay, melancholy, somber. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, it really hit me hard. I wish I wasn't on the bus reading at that moment. <laughs> If you're interested, it's on page 100 and 102 in this edition. So, so if you get to page 102 and you get that sudden rush of intense emotion, yeah, so did I. Christopher Isherwood, his life was incredible. He moved to Germany in the 1930s. I believe he lived in Berlin in those years leading up to World War II. Imagine that. 
I think it was also just before the declaration of World War II, when Japan was at war with China, he and the poet W. H. Auden went to China for several weeks to look and report on the situation that was happening there. How in the world do you get from Berlin to Beijing in 1938? So after all that early adventure, and I had a bit of a stopover, I believe, in New York City and realized that he loved America and that's where he wanted to live, but not on the East Coast. He wanted to live on the West Coast. California was the place for Mr. Isherwood. In 1953, when he was walking on the beach in Santa Monica, California, 48-year-old Christopher Isherwood met a young man who he began a relationship with that lasted 33 years until Isherwood's death in 1981. This was a bit of a scandal, even among the open-minded people of California, because Christopher Isherwood's new boyfriend was 30 years younger than he was. Don Bacardi was 18. They would go to parties together as a couple, which, from what I understand, was really astonishing. This young man that became an artist in his own right, he's, uh, he's kind of a sketch artist. I believe the, the cover, Christopher Isherwood wrote a book called Christopher and His Kind. And on the cover of that book, there is a sketch by his boyfriend. They made a film. They, they made a film of this book, as you can see. And there was another film made as well called Chris and Dawn is a bit of a biography about the relationship of these two men, Isherwood and his, his young boyfriend, uh, Bacardi. Something you're interested in if you're a fan of Isherwood or if you're just sort of more curious about that kind of a life at that time. You've spoken out in this book, uh, Mr. Isherwood, very strongly and indeed very courageously uh, in favor of uh, the homosexual mode of life. But uh, do, do you think there are some things in life that a homosexual misses? Certainly, and there are some things that a heterosexual misses too. But do you think that the balance is more, uh, uh, as far as the missing is concerned, on the homosexual side, or do you think it's about equal? Well, it depends so much what kind of person you are, doesn't it? I mean, uh, if you dislike uh, feeling that you're in a minority, if you dislike a certain amount of persecution, if you dislike uh, the, in other words, the attitude, uh, the um, predicament which the homosexual is in, even in very civilized countries like this one, uh, then of course uh, it's not for you. But if you're rather aggressive, and if you don't mind being in the minority, and if it even stimulates you in some way, uh, then um, I think it's quite bracing. It's time for my little announcement. One month ago, I started back at university, almost precisely 30 years after I started at university the first time. I went to university in 1993 in Ottawa. I've gone back to get a degree in English literature. Why am I telling you this? In case the videos are not very good or comprehensive or boring or scatterbrained or just um, a bit weak, my apologies. I'm, I'm studying and I'm really quite overwhelmed with university work. I, I've been at it now for four weeks and I feel like I'm, I'm struggling already. Like I, I feel that I'm in over my head. I've got too much work to do. What really pisses me off, I, like I'm taking five classes, three of them are English classes and two of them are extras. And I'm really annoyed that the English classes are quite fine. I'm happy with those. It's, it's the two extra classes that are really causing me to do, like to have to do the most work. That's what annoys me. I want to tell the teachers, you know, this is not my major. It's not, it's, it's like first year Japanese and this other class, like an introduction for mature learners. I just want to say, look, like these classes, there's too much homework. Stop it. Like nobody is majoring in this class. These are extra classes for extra credits. Take it easy with the homework. It's something I actually I worry about because like I feel the YouTube channel is is getting starting to get somewhere like it's it's starting to make some progress. People are watching, people are subscribing. Thank you. And it looks like it's it's starting to be something. And as it's starting to be something, all of a sudden my focus is completely removed. It's taken away. I'm distracted. I've I've really got to focus on the schoolwork. Yeah. So there you go. I'm going to try to make the videos better and better. That's my goal, you know, to keep improving with my the, my presentation skills and also with the editing skills, you know, to make some nice looking videos that you guys like to watch. You know what I thought? I, I thought it would be fun. I thought it, I thought it would be like an American movie, but it's not fun. 
like it's loads of work it's loads of homework it's it's not fun. Thank you for watching. This is uh, Grant Loves Books, and he's gone back to university to, to prove it. Because so much of it is online even though I'm attending my classes like the teachers just keep adding more stuff to the website and it's and like I have to I have to keep checking the, the university website three or four or five times a day just to make sure that nothing new has been added you know and like I'm starting to get really serious anxiety like oh you know have I done all the homework I think so am I sure that I've done all the homework because maybe I've missed something and I have to check the website okay Okay, it looks like nothing's been added. And then I go to my Japanese class and it's like, okay, so did you review this for homework? Like, no, I didn't even know that existed. And I, I just have to sit there like a dummy, sort of, you know, and I look at the teacher to let her know, no, I didn't do that for homework because I didn't know it was, we were supposed to do it. I realize it's university and all, but can't you tell us what the homework is? One, two, three, four, can't you say this is the homework? You know, like to just keep slipping extra stuff in and, and I don't think that's fair, like on a Saturday. Just, oh, there's something. You know, I've read more than the professors. I've really read more. And it's not their fault, you know, because the professors have to specialize. They have to specialize in their little zone of interest, whereas I don't have to. I've read more. But so what? I mean, it's not a race and, and they, they probably, you know, think about it a lot more deeply than I do. I just... I just love to read. You know, could I talk more seriously, more in depth about a single man? I really could, I really could, but I'd probably have to read it two more times and I'd really have to, you know, with a pencil, underlining, thinking, okay, what about that? What about that? And I, I don't want to do that. I want to read a lot of books. I don't want to examine them. A little bit, you know, if it's quite obvious. Okay, that's enough. Jesus Christ, this video is going to be impossible to edit, rambling away like a 